you recently said Hackworth was a rule follower most of his career. But in About Face, the book, he always talks about how he went against his commander's rules. How do you play the game but also act like Hackworth? Yeah, and so this is a classic example of the dichotomy of leadership with regard to obeying rules. And and Hackworth absolutely obeyed the rules. And he obeyed them to the to the extreme sometimes. If you remember in the book, he 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 worked in situations where he they were like the strictest in garrison, so like not in combat, just in garrison, he would everything's perfect, uniform. If you remember when General Mukiyama was on, and we talked to we talked to him about meeting Hack for the first time, mm-hmm. and you know I was kind of like, what was he like? And he was like, oh, he was high and tight, haircut, totally squared away. That's following the rules to mm-hmm. a T. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that he played, he definitely played. He played the game. Mm-hmm. Hackworth played the game. He developed with. He developed relationships with, with people that were senior to him, people that were influential. SLA Marshall, who he went on tour with, if you remember, through Vietnam. And SLA Marshall, he didn't really even respect, but SLA Marshall had such big influence that he said, hey, you know what? I gotta yeah. become bros with this guy. Yeah. He played the game because Marshall had influence. And he even took some hits, you know, took a little f- frag for, for, for SLA Marshall. Mm. But at the same time, if his troops weren't getting the right treatment that they needed, he would do what he needed to do. He would break rules to take care of them if he had to. And at the same time, he would follow the rules to a T. If you remember when he took over the battalion in Vietnam, the hopeless, and wanted to turn them into the hardcore, he brought all their crap into the middle of the thing and said, we're going to fly it out of here. No more radios, no more guitars, none of this other stuff. Getting it out. So Mm. that's like following the rules to a T. Mm. But at the same time, if he needed to like steal food for them or steak or something to get, a, a, he would do that stuff. Mm-hmm. So he's constantly balancing that economy. Another thing he did is he he took these administrative jobs that he hated in order to rise through the ranks, in order to become to get to get places to develop relationships, so so he could have more influence. He was assigned to the Pentagon. He he. In the book, he talks about the Pentagon being, working in the Pentagon being a claustrophobic hole, no more than 20 by 20 feet with 15 other people in it. <laughs> and he talks about, he said, you'd, he'd say your paper, your in inbox would be filled when you showed up and you'd immediately, the phone would be ringing, you'd be talking to people all over the world. Viet, if all the people in Vietnam, they're calling you at their, their time zone. And he, so he didn't like this job. But guess what? Got the highest possible evaluations when he left. Why? Because he played the game. And he built these relationships with, with all these colonels and all these generals and all these people that had influence, these Glover Johns and Pearson and co- countless others by doing what he needed to do. And then when he needed to, he broke, he broke the rules. And sometimes he went a little too far with breaking the rules. And when... He when he got out when they kind of drove him out after he did the big interview where he said hey We're not gonna win they went and drilled down into his camps and looked at the things that he had going on there and Said oh you you're allowing this to happen. You're allowing this to happen. So he left himself a little bit vulnerable By breaking the rules a little bit too much So the, a rule to learn from that is like don't do things that people can hold over you and for me The things that people can hold over for you are things where you can't stand up and say, yes, that's what I did. Mm. Yes, that's what I did. Hey, my guys didn't hadn't had a good meal in four weeks. They've been in the field for three of those weeks. And when they came out, guess what? I I figured out a way to get some steak. Mm-hmm. And I took it from the rear and I had it flown up using mil- using our helicopters. And I had a yep, that's what I did. And if you mm-hmm. wanna you wanna drop the hammer on me for that, got it. Yeah. Now, if you do that, that's cool. But there's some things where you break the rules where maybe you wouldn't be able to stand up tall and proud and say, this is what I did and this is why I did it. Mm. So you want to be careful that you don't do things that will allow people to hold things over your head. Mm. And for me, things that are things like that are things that you can't stand up with your chest out and say, this is what I did and this is why I do it. I know it wasn't within the regulations. This is what I did, this is why I do it. And if I get fired because of that, understood, Mm. check. 
Now, here's where you get a little. Here's where we can we can question hack mm. for sure. Let me ask you this: If hack would have. Because okay, so he he didn't play the game at the end. He didn't play the game. He went on an interview and said, "Hey, we're not going to win the war. Not the way we're fighting. We're not going to win the war." Within a few weeks, he was driven out of the army. Mm-hmm. He didn't play the game at that moment, right? Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this: If he would have played the game just a little bit, just said, "Look, we need to change our strategy." If we're, you know what I mean? If he would have mm-hmm. just, cha- and then he would have stayed in. And then he would have perhaps gotten a promotion and got perhaps gotten to a position where he actually had influence over the way the war was being fought. Mm. If he had done that, would he have been better off? Would he have been able to better help the situation? Because I don't know, once they drove him out, it's not like that interview. Well, I don't know. We'd have to check the check the historical sort of results of that interview, it certainly started to sway public opinion. And maybe that, you know, maybe in his mind, hey, I need to tell everyone what's going on so we can get out of here, right? Right? So maybe, Mm. maybe that was the intention. Maybe that was the result. Maybe that helped shut down the war eventually. Mm. But maybe if he would have played, continued to play the game, he could have gotten to a position where he had more, even more influence and could have changed the way the war was being fought. Mm. I don't know. I'm sure we could have a long debate uh, about that. Mm. But that's, as a leader, something that you are going to have to weigh out all the time. Mm. And there's situations where, uh, and actually breaking news today, General Mattis just put in his resignation for being Secretary of Defense. So is that's I, we're, we're gonna have to talk about that when I get a little more information on it. Mm. Is that him saying, "Look, I it's gonna be better for me to make this statement by leaving," mm. or would he have been better off staying there where he can at least still have a massive amount of influence because he's the Secretary of Defense? Mm-hmm. We'll have to drill down on that one. That's a hmm. that's a good question. Both those are good questions, and the bottom line is. Um, If you haven't read About Face, read it and learn from a guy named Colonel David Hackworth. Mm -hmm. Next question. Next question. So the answer to that question was sort of another question. Kind of a question you got to ask yourself. Yes. And that's a question, and I've talked about this, where if I tell you, Echo, hey, Echo, I want you to do this mission. I want you to do it this way. Take your platoon and go do it. And you disagree with what I'm telling you. Mm. And you just say, hey, boss, I don't want to do it that way. And I said, hey, you shut up and do what I told you to do. And you go, you know what? You can fire me, but I'm not doing it. And I go, okay, fine. You're fired. And I get knucklehead over here who's mm-hmm. a yes man. It comes in and I tell him to go do the mission the way I told him to do it. And he goes and doesn't. Gets everyone killed. Mm-hmm. Would it have been better off if you said, okay, boss, I get it. I, I'll i do it your way. Here's some things I'd really like to not do. Mm-hmm. And you go, no. I said, no, shut up. And then you take your guys. You mitigate everything that you can. Actually, there's an example of this in Band of Brothers where Major Winters is being told, hey, send a reconnaissance element across the river again tonight. Hmm. And he doesn't want to do it. The The war's almost over. Hmm. They had taken some casualties, I think, the night before when they did the same type of operation, and he just says, got it, boss. And then the guys go, and they sit in the, they, they pretend to go out, but they really just sit in the basement of a building on their side of the river. Hmm. And then later on, they say, yep, we went, we came back, we didn't find anything. Okay, cool. There's a perfect example. Mm. Imagine if, if Major Winners, Dick Winners, was like, we're not doing it. And now you're getting an ego contest with the colonel yeah, who's like, yeah. oh, yes, you are. No, we're not. Okay, fine. You're fired. Let me get knucklehead over here yeah, who's yeah. going to do what I told him to do, who's a total yes man. And now we take that risk and guys get killed. So so who is it? There's a, there's a, Dick Winners played the game. Yeah. He played the game so he could still have that influence and power yeah. and, and still protect his guys. Yeah, can get complex. Yeah, it's it's very. That's why leadership is hard. Yes, it's it's weird though because when you say it's complex, when you say leadership is hard, at the same time, like you, if you're a principled human being and you have principles and you know what's right and you're doing the right thing for the right reason, the decisions are actually usually a little easier. Clear, like yeah. cl- clearer. Yeah, yeah, they might not be easy, but they're clearer. Mm. Like I know what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this one out. Yeah, and w- this this I think applies to 
to most scenarios where like if you think of the big picture where if you're like hey i'm gonna consider myself after everything's gonna be said and done you know it yes. kind of goes along with what you said like oh can you stand can you up stand and up? be proud you, you, if you consider okay look back you're gonna there because there's gonna come a point where you're gonna look back on this and you're gonna feel the way you're gonna feel right now but later on how are you gonna feel about like how you handled it yeah, you know what sure. decision you made and how it's you a made good it. thing to tell kids too yeah. like would you if you're if you're at a party yeah or you're wherever and something's going on would you be proud to stand up and be hey here was the situation yeah and I this is what I did and this is why I did it yeah. if you can't Maybe you should really reconsider what your actions are going to be. I know, man. Because a lot of the time, shoot, especially as a kid, as an adult, too. A lot of the time, it's like they're literally the opposite decision. You yeah. know, like, especially if it's one of those, like, go along with the crowd kind of scenarios, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, oh, yeah, it's easy to go along there. And when you're a kid, especially when it involves drinking and stuff, sometimes mm -hmm. there's there's really no consequence. You know, whatever you did, something yeah. dumb, no one gets hurt or dies or nothing like that. Yeah. But every once in a while, there is. But so it's like it makes it harder because you don't. Like when you go do something, I don't know, dumb, I don't know, go jump off a bridge, I don't know, something, <laughs> drink and drive or whatever, and no one dies or no one, nothing big happens, it sort of reinforces that maybe it might be okay. You know, you may yeah. be able to slide with this behavior a little bit, you know? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, yeah, if you can clearly see that big picture where in the future you're going to be looking back on how you handled it. Yeah. Uh, here's another thing, same concept I used to tell, I told my guys was, you just might as well act like CNN is recording what you're doing and it's yeah. going to be on CNN. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's so if you want to act like an idiot, guess what? It's going to be on CNN because someone's got a camera somewhere around there. Yeah. And you might as well be saying that today as a kid, as a teenager. Yeah. You might as well be saying, yep, this is this is the next viral video. This yeah. is my 15 minutes of fame <laughs> is going to be me doing whatever I'm doing whatever right here. About to do. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. got to watch out for that. Learn from hack. <laughs>